There are so many benefits to including refeeds into your cutting phase, but a lot of people are afraid to take them. However, the benefits are both mental in terms of being able to enjoy more food, look forward to a day of higher calories, but they also help physiologically by increasing glycogen storage, which gives you more energy and allows you to perform better in the gym. And if done right, they can actually help you lose weight better in the long run by helping keeping your hormones and metabolism in a better place, as well as reduce hunger and retain more muscle as you diet. So today I'm gonna to help you understand if refeeds are right for you or not and how to set them up for yourselves if you're gonna include them. Hey, this is Colin DeWay. If you wanna master your metabolism and create forever results, start now by subscribing and click on that bell notification so you don't miss anything. And if you're ready to take things to the next level and finally create the results you've struggled to get yourself, apply for online coaching, link in the description. Okay, so first we need to start off with what a refeed is, which simply put is basically a day of higher calories, typically mostly through additional carbohydrates. So while a refeed is a day to be able to enjoy more food, you need to understand the difference between a refeed and a cheat meal or cheat day. The benefit of the refeed approach is you know how much you're consuming and you have this extra data to be able to know what type of adjustments you need to make. Whereas with a cheat, sure you get some of those same mental benefits, but this can easily turn into some sort of free for all and you have no clue how much you're actually eating and you can easily undo an entire week's worth of calorie deficit by doing this. And I can't tell you how many people have reached out saying they struggle to lose weight, but they have to have these big cheats every weekend and then are upset with the fact that they can't see results and it's like, I, I get it, I understand, and it's not like there's never a time to take an untracked meal, there certainly is, but if you can't see the results you're after and you keep going way off plan, it may be time to rethink things. Because like I said, with this approach, you may not know how much you're eating and it could be a lot more than you think. But the whole cheat meal thing, that's a topic for a different video, which I actually have one if you're interested. After this video is done, there's a link in the description covering why they may or may not be a good idea. Anyway, I also wanted to briefly clear something up here because sometimes I get the argument that a refeed approach is only for bodybuilders or competitors, and I just don't agree with that. In fact, I don't even coach competitors at all, and the majority of my clients who go through cutting phases will be on some sort of refeed approach, at least at some point. I think you can maybe make the argument that they're a little bit more important for competitors who are getting really lean, but that doesn't mean they're not useful for the regular person like you. Okay, with that out of the way, I want to show you exactly how you can set up a refeed for yourself. Now, what I used to preach, and if you watch some of my older videos, I say this, what I would typically do is start with no refeeds, eventually add in a single day refeed per week, and then work our way up to a consecutive day refeed approach. But I've kind of gotten away from that approach now, and typically once I'm introducing refeeds, I wanna do at least a double refeed. The reason for this is while a single day refeed will help replenish glycogen storage and have some benefits like that, it doesn't appear they do anything for improving important hormones like leptin and ghrelin, Whereas there's more and more emerging research that seems to be backing how consecutive day refeeds can help with things like hormones, metabolism, and retaining lean body mass. So typically at this point, the only time I'll have someone on a single day refeed approach is if they just really like having that one day of higher calories and it helps them stick to the plan and they prefer it, then that's fine. One thing we always have to remember, there's a lot of different approaches we can take, but still at the end of the day, or I should say the end of the week, it is that weekly average calories that matters the most. So anyway, I do recommend when you start your refeed approach that you do a consecutive day double refeed where it's back-to-back -back days of higher calories. That said, I do, if possible, like to wait at least one or two weeks into a cutting phase before introducing the refeeds. And it's not like I have any scientific research to support this. It's just something I've noticed over time that it seems like introducing them too early in the process almost kind of works against fat loss in the beginning stages, whereas down the road, it can be very helpful. That said, you gotta know yourself personally. And if you just cannot make it through even one week without a higher day calorie and you're gonna blow it out, then just do it right away, right? No matter what, like I just said, it's your total calories for the week that matters most. So if you need that high day to stick to the plan, that's fine. I don't want you to feel like you have to be exactly perfect to be able to see results. That's not the case. I'm just telling you what I find to be most optimal. Now, as far as how to manipulate your macros when it's time to start a refeed approach, it can vary, but I typically recommend increasing your carbs by about 30 to 60%. While I also like to make a small increase in fat, maybe five to 10 grams to help aid in digesting all those extra carbs, 
And as far as protein goes, I'll sometimes reduce it maybe five to 10 grams, or if you're well over one gram per pound of body weight, I might bring it down all the way to one gram. So say for instance, if you were 150 pounds eating 170 grams of protein per day, I might in the refeed bring those protein grams down to 150 in that case, just to allow for a little bit more carbs. Plus keep in mind that carbs are protein sparing. So when carbs are higher, the need for protein comes down a little. Now, there are a couple ways you can approach this. The most common way and what I hear most frequently is to just include it on top of whatever your normal cutting calories are. However, what I will do sometimes is actually equate your calories for the week, taken away from five days to give to two days, making it so that your average calories remains the same, but you have a couple days of higher carbs. But it really just kind of depends on how fast you're losing in the beginning stages. So you want to make sure you're losing no more than about 1% of your body weight on average, maybe up to 2% if you're obese. So if you're losing over this pace already, then I would just add it right on top of your normal calories and not make any average adjustments. If you're well within reason, if you're around that 0.5 to 1%, especially if it's on the lower end, then it might make more sense to do the weekly average to keep your total calories the same, but still have a couple days of higher calories. Let me show you an example. Let's say you're eating 2200 calories for your normal daily calories. If you took away 100 calories from your five low days, that would give you an extra 500 calories to spread out between your two high days. So this would give you 2100 calories five days a week and two days of 2400 calories, keeping your average for the week at 2200. Keep in mind, there are many, many ways to do this. This is just one example. Now, some other things to keep in mind here is it doesn't have to be two days. I recommend at least two days to get those hormonal and metabolic benefits, but it can be more. It doesn't have to be five, two. It doesn't even necessarily have to be within one week, like a three, four or anything like that. You could do three high days followed by five, six, or even seven low days and repeat that. It's just for tracking purposes and keeping things simple. It's usually easier to do a one week at a time approach but it doesn't have to be. The point is there isn't a right or wrong approach and doing something that works better for you or that you enjoy more makes more sense. And keep in mind as well, the more consecutive days of higher calories, the more likely there's gonna be a benefit for things like hormones and metabolism. And I cannot stress, please do not avoid this approach because you're afraid of gaining weight or wrecking your progress. I see so many people do this and they just get stuck and have nowhere to go because they're so petrified of this. But the thing is, by avoiding these breaks, you're actually causing your body to adapt to what you're doing faster, making it that much more difficult, meaning you're gonna have to get that much more aggressive, you're gonna have to do it that much longer, and it can just really be a struggle. So not only don't be afraid of refeeds, but especially don't be afraid of diet breaks, which for simplification is basically like a week or more of consecutive refeeds, which this really helps with all the things that we've been talking about. So just don't get so caught up in the short term all the time. Always think big picture and what's gonna be for the best in the long run. And taking consecutive day refeeds with some diet breaks mixed in will allow the process to keep working better for longer. The body's just too adaptive to keep pounding it into the ground all the time. It's going to fight back. Your metabolism is going to slow. You're going to start feeling more tired and exhausted and hungry and cranky and all these things. You need to give your body a reason to stop fighting back so hard. Plus keep in mind, unless you go on some sort of free for all, these extra calories you're taking in a refeed, even if you see a little bit of a weight jump on the scale, this is not going to be body fat. This is going to be things like replenished glycogen. Remember one gram of glycogen is accompanied by about three grams of water so don't get too caught up in that scale that said i will say this this is rare but occasionally i will see some people who just do not respond well to the refeed approach they do this they see a big spike on the scale and they struggle to have it come back down over the next week or so and they repeat this cycle and if that ends up being the case then maybe it's not good for you like i said this is rare don't be afraid of this but if you notice it it's something to pay attention to and some people just do better by keeping things the same throughout the week. So while something might be most optimal for the majority of people, we always have to pay attention to how our body responds and what works well for us, both mentally and physically. And if this is you, it might just be because you're doing a little bit too much for yourself and that's why I give a range. So I said about 30 to 60%. If you do 50% and your body doesn't respond very well, try the lower end, try maybe only about 30%. Some people do better with bigger increases, some people do better with smaller increases.
And we also have to consider that weight isn't the be all end all here. And there could be some reasons you're seeing a big spike by taking refeeds, especially if you're someone who's terrified of eating more carbs. So what you do is take a refeed, but you just increase all your carbs through difficult to digest foods like a lot of veggies. Well, this is gonna cause a lot of inflammation in the gut, cause a lot of bloating and see an increase on the scale. Same thing goes if by taking a refeed, you would start including a bunch of foods that you don't normally include into your diet, your body might have a hard time digesting them. With all this said, I can't stress enough, it's your weekly average that matters the most. I don't want you to feel like you need to be perfect. You have to hit exact macros every single day, whether you have a refeed approach or not, it doesn't work that way. You can be balanced. You can eat a little bit more on some days and a little bit less on some days. If your average for the week is all the same, for the most part, it's not really gonna make much of a difference. But taking a consecutive refeed approach has a decent chance of not only keeping yourself in a better spot metabolically, but also mentally, and we can't overlook how important that is. Now, I touched on diet breaks briefly in this video, but I think they're super important and highly overlooked by so many people. So make sure you check out this top video next, and I'll show you exactly how to set them up and how frequently you should take them. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll see you in that other video.